Before I jump into this episode, I thought I would share I finally painted the inside frame of the door in the butler's pantry. It took me a while. It's these small little projects that I just do in increments here and there, but things are slowly getting done. And do you know that I never realized this faucet was the wrong finish? It came in as polished nickel and I wanted satin nickel, but that's okay. I have two beautiful faucets that are made in the USA and I'm gonna try to remember to link the company below. If I forget, please let me know. Well, it's a very early morning here at Sugarwood. I get up sometimes 4.30, 5 o'clock, maybe 5.30 to start my day. And it is favorite time of day for me. It's nice and quiet. I get to journal. I get to sip my coffee or my tea. This is really the only time during the day and night that I'm able to relax. And part of that is due to my ADHD. My brain is on overload all of the time, which is one of the reasons I have high anxiety. Now, if you're a brand new viewer and you came here because you saw my thumbnail, in this video, I'm going to show an herbal tea I created to help my anxiety. But if you go through a lot of my older videos, I think you'll see that a lot of them are calming as well. That's one thing I really like to focus on is slowing down, living in the moment, and just enjoying life. So if you're new here, what you're going to see on this channel is home and gardening and lifestyle. And sometimes you might even get to laugh at me and that's okay. Ow! <laughs> because we all know laughter is the best medicine. Let's get on with this episode. I promised many of you I would share my Easter table setting. And then we're going to do a little bit more in the garden. I'm going to show you a tea I created that helps my anxiety and it actually helped my mother's anxiety too. So I hope you enjoy this episode of New England Fine Living at Sugarwood. Here are the flowers I just picked and here is the teapot I just broke. Actually, I broke it yesterday getting a crock out of the butler's pantry to do a project outside. You'll see said crock a little bit later, but the daffodils look beautiful inside. This particular daffodil has little sparkles in it that catch the sunshine. It is absolutely beautiful. For our Easter brunch, I had some of the vegetables just prepping here in the kitchen. I had asparagus sitting in water for a couple days and the green beans. And this table in the middle, I brought in here temporarily. I don't think I shared this in my last video because I did it just before a company came to see if I liked the size and the scale. This is just from another room and it worked out great. I had a couple people mention I should do oval when I shared this over on Instagram. And at first I'm like, no, I don't see oval in my future. But that comment actually spurred an idea. This is a drop leaf table that my father found in an old barn attic that we used to have. And he ended up cutting the legs off and putting casters. Well, if I found one like this and kept it tall, that might work because I also want to roll it away from the area if I'd like. Now this is a casual table setting for our Easter brunch that I created. I used the basket of flowers that are gonna go outside. Some of the flowers had passed, but it was still enough to have a little Easter flare. And I tucked in a little bunny there. 
and then also I used all the thrifted items that I brought out of the cabinets. Not only do I have the Corel that I like to use every day because it doesn't break easily, I have Wedgwood on here, I have Toll Sterling Silver on here, I've got my thrifted Ironstone containers, thrifted napkin rings, and then I tucked a little chocolate. At the end of the day, I put them on a plate in the center so Willow couldn't get them at nighttime before we woke. And I'm showing some napkins here that I ended up picking up on Amazon thinking about the craft project we did a couple segments ago and I really like the quality of them and I'm going to link that below. Now this was exciting for me. This is the first holiday and family meal made in our new kitchen with Martha Stewart. She cooks and bakes with me a lot. She crafts with me a lot too. It's not a holiday unless we're making my mother's butterscotch rolls, which this recipe is on my website, and I will also try to link a video that I've created in the past for these. They are so delicious. And here I'm using the rolling pin that I picked up thrifting the other day. It worked out great. The broken butterscotch rolls are always the treat the day before all the others are served because if not, they'd be gone before company arrived. This batch came out a little bit wonky or actually ruffly looking, which is not their norm, but they still tasted the same and they were delicious. Now here is the herbal tea that I mentioned, and I have been sipping this particular concoction a few times since I made it last week. And it's the butterfly pea flower tea that I introduced some of you to. And then I also put in some of the lemon balm that we had crushed here at the house from our gardens. I added a little lemon and honey. And please keep in mind, any reference to the use of herbs should not be confused as medical advice. This is just something I like to do for myself, and you do you, and maybe check with your doctor if you'd like to try something like this if you deal with anxiety. I was this years old when I realized I probably should have put the strainer in after I put the hot water into the pot, but since it wasn't bagged, the lemon balm really just filled the holes. I just had to go a little at a time. Even adding the lemon, I did it ass backwards. I should have just put it in afterwards, but it still worked. And then I added more lemon later. But as you can see, that tea turned purple from the blue because of the lemon. Now, I absolutely love adding the lemon. You can do it without. And you'll see here that I actually added another strainer just to get rid of all of those other pieces of lemon balm. And I'm making this on the fly right now because my mother and I are going to be heading on the highway. And she and I both deal with anxiety when it comes to highway driving and large trucks. So I thought, why not put these two teas together that are calming and add some lemon and some honey and see what we think. And it could have been the placebo effect, but we both agreed that the ride was not as bad as it has been in the past. So I have been concocting this a little bit here and a little bit there the past week, and I do really like it. Now my mother wanted extra honey because she feels the lemon is a little bit bitter, but I'm the opposite. I like more citrus and I don't add a lot of sweet to my teas. I love the speed travel mug that we're using here. It's actually Bone China. I used to carry it online and at my brick and mortar store, but I stopped bringing that one in when the seasons changed. And now I've got the large pheasant tankards coming in and I should order more of these. And it took me a while to figure out I had the, the rubber collar on. It helps protect your hands from the heat because this Bone China really does work well with holding the heat. And off we go. Also online, my site does have lemon balm that I'm selling, so if you'd like to try this, check this out. The butterfly pea flower tea, I'll also leave a link for that. 
Not only am I cleaning up this part of the garden bed, I'm playing with Mother Nature's maracas. I have seeds in these iris pods here. I'm gonna save them. Very cool. Well, my pitcher full of iris pods tipped outside, so I don't have half as many seeds as I thought I was going to. But truth be told, I have collected seeds every year and I've done nothing with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect these and I'm gonna get also some of the others I've collected and see if they're still viable and will produce. And what I'm gonna do is put them between some moist paper towels for a couple days and see if anything sprouts from them. And now I'm just gonna get a little bit lazy because it's taken me too long to do one at a time and a lot of them are empty. So I'm just gonna grab the rest of the bunch and dab them on the towel here and see what happens. I should mention I usually collect the seeds at the end of the season, but last year I was ill, didn't get out the gardens to clean up, so I figured I would do it now while I was cleaning. Who knows if it's gonna work or not. Have you grown any irises from seeds? I've only purchased plants to replant. I've never done it by seed. Last year I mentioned I was cleaning out this circle area. I don't know if it was just a design feature from the foundation of the barn. Was there a well here that was smaller and then they just filled it and then enclosed it? I have no idea. But down the road, my vision for this, if it stays here, at least as a circle, I want to get rid of this forsythia. Somehow we're going to have to get it by the roots. Might have to get a large equipment in here rebuild the circle, try to get rid of the bittersweet. I'm still trying to figure out how to eradicate that naturally. I've heard you can put Roundup right on the fresh cut uh, stem from when they start to bloom. I'm going to actually try to inject it with vinegar first, not just put it on the surface because that won't work. I'm gonna try injecting it with vinegar. I'm gonna look for um, my turkey baster that has actually a needle on it. And if I can't find it, I'll buy another or try to find one and see if that works because I want to do this as organically as possible here in the garden since I will be doing some sort of garden here in the center. I'm not sure if it will be just flowers, flowers and herbs. And that is part of the plan. Not all this year, but I'm hoping to fill this whole area with beautiful paths of cutting flowers and herbs and keeping everything inside the wall Ben and I have discussed there's so much open space here that we don't use and it mows and it is fun playing on it with Willow, but I might do a little lavender, I can't say field, but an area where I can do fresh cut lavender and maybe just sell it somewhere at a, maybe a local farm stand or something. And over where the vegetable garden is, I'll probably do some vegetables. Things that I don't want, like the deer to come inside of this part of the yard or whatnot. I'm not sure yet with that. It might be another cutting garden. I am so much better at flowers than vegetables. I say that, but it's just because I haven't educated myself completely on a lot of the things that I like to grow. So I take that back. So I clean this part up here. I already took away one cart of the soft items to put into the compost pile. And now I'm cutting the bittersweet and the briars. Those will go way over there. Let me just speed into the burn pile. That's from when we cut down a big pine that fell the other day. And I'll start cleaning up this wall here. But I feel good getting this part done now. I'm gonna cut inside all of these things just so I can get a fresh start and figure out how to keep removing that bittersweet. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna have a load of bark mulch delivered or do them a bag at a time at my leisure versus having a big pile of bark mulch sitting around. I have over here to clean up. I'm gonna to do today as well. I'm gonna take a look over here. You know, I, I walk over here all the time, but even though there's still a little snow, I have not yet looked at my lavender and it seems to be very happy here. This one I just covered up and let's see if I have any peonies here. This is a peony plant that I tried to save from 
a crust you know on the other side that's not peony I don't see anything popping through yet but that doesn't mean anything I'm gonna keep my hopes high because this was under snow just recently if I see one little green shoot somewhere up, look and I meant red shoot we have success so this is a peony that I transplanted from somewhere else in the yard I do forget so this is great I at least know I'm gonna have I think this is a white peony because this is where I'm gonna be doing my moon garden I have some white lavender coming to find out one of them was purple once I planted it I see that there is a lily sneaking in through. I'm gonna to try to get that out. If you remember, I dug all the lilies out here. It was weeks of work, working with pretty much one arm. So I'm pretty impressed that I got this done with the, with the, the limitation that I had. And I have some other plants here coming in. What do I have here? I already forget. Tacky and white. I already forget, but I know they're white. And then these are all lilies that I will start to move. The rose bush has some buds here. And look at all the daffodils that are coming up. I'll be raking here a little bit later too. And this pile is still here. I'm gonna slowly work on the light ones and I'm gonna ask Ben to come out and help me get rid of that big stump. I see something white over here. I don't know what it is. I hope it's just the back of a leaf. But we have a lot of stuff to clean up here. This pile, <laughs> this pile is from last spring that I made trying to clean up with one arm. So this whole garden area that I'm cleaning, all of this is gonna be actually two years of cleanup because a lot of this was down on the ground and then the new shoots came up through it, which is fine. Um, it was very healthy, but this year it's gonna get a fresh start. things that I've been finding digging in the yard, metal pieces. We found a wood stove in the front wall, and I'm guessing there's a lot more stuff buried here in the gardens, including a ball. You think she wants it? You think she wants it? I just cleared off this part of the wall, which I do think used to be a ramp into the barn. And now I can look down on the circle and you can see what I have to deal with. And I'll show you later what this looks like, at least cleaned up to the point I got it cleaned up. Well, that was a long day and I'm finally ready to relax. Everything's been put away. I'm gonna sit out here with Ben, have a glass of wine and enjoy the warm weather because we'll probably have some cold days moving in again. But right now I'm going to take advantage of it and just live in the moment, including look at the reflection in this glass. And later that evening I was outside with Willow and I thought I would check out the work that I did. And even though it's dark out, I can see a difference and it just makes me feel so good to have another thing done on the property. It will most likely be next video, but I'll show you this area in the daylight as well. Another morning, another garden. And this one happens to be in our front yard right between the two driveway entrances. And this has had a lot of abuse with snow being pushed against it and blown against it and whatnot. So I started cleaning up some of the beds and when it comes to irises, they clean up real easy. But I'm pulling this remembering I have gloves that Ben bought me a couple years ago and I'm gonna go get them. They have little claws. I shared these a few years back when I was at Groton House using them for the first time. And I really like how it gets right inside of the plants and I could be gentle or I can be rough.
I got everything raked out and cleaned out. And I decided to do something here. I kept finding that a lot of the vinca was being pulled out. I was being a little aggressive getting some stuff out of here. And some of it has roots. So I'm going to actually go through my piles now, grab the pieces with roots and even some without. And I'm going to put it in this pot that I have over here with some water. And then I'll bring them inside and give them an extra cleaning and then put them in a clear container, put them on my kitchen windowsill, and hopefully I can get them to root enough so I can replant them. Because if you don't have this vinca, it really is expensive. And my mother always used to transplant this all over the house from one place to another, always took off. And I'm going to do the same here, hopefully, and just see how rooting it goes in some water versus just planting them in the soil. I'm waiting to see how long it takes Willow to put her ball in the container because that is her MO. It needs to be washed too, I guess. Well, I see Willow, but I don't see a ball. So, oh, what is she looking at? Hmm. Called it. Oh, Willow. I had to take my gloves off for that. Ugh. So what I have here, like I said, I have some with roots and some without. And I'm going to see if both will keep growing. And I'm going to put them like in a clear jar and make it look a little prettier so I can have it on my sink. some in that do not have roots and see if I can get them to root. I'm going to go right at a node. It's time to sharpen these. I'll show you how I do that next. Hey, Willow. So if you could see this, if I get it into the frame there, I have two sets of roots. I'm going to cut this one into two separate pieces and I'm going to root them this way. Once again, this is trial and error. As I mentioned before, when my mother and I used to transplant vinca, we would dig up the soil and replant it. I'm trying this because I yanked them from their roots by accident when I was working in the garden and I want to see if I can save some of these and get them ready to transplant somewhere else in the yard. Well, let's see if I can get these to keep rooting and then I will have a little bit stronger vinca to go back in a new garden area. Once a week, Ben and I make it a point to go out for date night, and this week is no different. And look, it's 87 degrees. We're in the second week of April, and we have the temperatures of summer. It's amazing. It's like we skipped spring. But right now, we're heading over to Tollbooth Tavern in Francistown, and I want to show you the door on the front of this old property. This used to be a private residence and they did used to have a toll booth on here making people pay as they were passing their house going to Canada. And it's really not spring here unless the peepers are out. And if you're not familiar with peepers, this is what they sound like. Thousands and thousands of tiny frogs. And then in the morning, the birds take over and wait until you hear the woodpeckers. Here's an odd factoid, and I had to know because this girl has had enough concussions to know if you're banging something with your head, you're gonna get some brain damage. How do woodpeckers do this? Well, I learned that they have very long tongues, that they are actually created so that they can put their tongue around their brain while they're hammering at the wood and then it retracts when they're not needing it. Pretty cool, huh?
anxiety and stress can cause so many other health issues. And one thing I really haven't touched on, which I didn't think I was going to, is I have a couple of ner ner I have a couple of ner neurological disorders, and it affects my speech, my thought process, how my body works, and stress and anxiety is key to a lot of these symptoms. Now, I wasn't even going to share that because I had a whole episode in here talking about how stress and anxiety can heighten some of the symptoms of other things that somebody might be going through, such as stuttering. But I decided just to do a little snippet because the other day I actually turned down doing a live segment with somebody on Instagram because of my fear of stuttering or having my little brain silent moment where I just say nothing and stare off. And I need to get over that. And I'm hoping to get over that. And I'm also just want to share that if you deal with this too, you're not alone. <laughs> 